<coughs> so this week's this week's parsha parshas vayishlach uh, we read we learn about two wars the first uh, is not actually a war between two nations it's a conflict between individuals it's a family feud between Yaakov and Esav. And uh, in the end, it doesn't uh, <clears throat> doesn't come to bloodshed. Maybe because of Yaakov Avinu's efforts, it's really not clear from the psukim if Yaakov's concern was a justified concern. The different days in Midrash Chazal, because if you read the psukim, you don't even see that Esav had any intentions to do anything to Yaakov. But in any case, in the end of the day, <clears throat> nothing happened. Later in the Pasha, there's a actual war, a war that was initiated by Shimon Valevi against the entire city of Shem. They, uh, they do release Dina from uh, Shem ben Hamor's home. And, uh, but it's clear that it wasn't for this purpose of uh, releasing Dina that they fought and killed all the Bnei Ha'ir. So uh, what justified this war in which they L'chaira, killed uh, many innocent civilians? <clears throat> it's interesting that Yaakov's opinion about this war and the Torah's opinion about this war it's also not clear. If you read the Psukim in the in Kapitel Lamed Dalit, that Vateitze Dino Basleya She Yoldo Liyaka Liroiz Bivnoisa Oretz. Yeah. She went to meet some other girls. She it was a family with the 12 boys. So she went out. Liroiz Bivnoisa Oretz. She had no sisters. So Yaakov really doesn't do much. But even when his sons come, it doesn't say what Yaakov does. It just says, They were very upset. And then there's this whole thing that Chamor talks to them about, you know, uh, allowing his son to uh, marry Dina. And Bechlal ve'hischatnu oisonu b'noiseichem titnu lonu ve'ez b'noiseinu tikhu lochem ve'itonu teish shevu v'oretz tiel lefneichem shvu v'scharuho v'heyochazu bo. And then they tell uh, they tell him that no, the only way that this can be done is if the anshe shchem will be mal. And then Chamor uh, and shchem tell the entire city that uh, this is the requirement and uh, we can become one one people with uh, with Yaakov and his children and they all are mal and then it says and then, uh, okay. And then, what? What? So, what's Yaakov's response? Vayoyme Yaakov el Shimon veLevi achartem oisi lahavi isheni beYoyshev haores baKnani uba Prizi vani mesei mispor vnesfu alai vhiikuni vnishmadati ani uvesi. So it, Yaakov criticizes what they did. However. He doesn't criticize the act in itself, the fact that they killed an entire city. He's uh, worried about the consequences that uh, 
Listen, women say misbah, and the, the people from around will come and they will wipe us out. Okay, so it seems like, in principle, Yaakov doesn't have a problem with what they did. And then the Torah gives the last word to the to Shimon Valevi. They respond to Yaakov. And that's the end of the parsha. So it would seem that uh, the Torah not only not only um, agrees in principle with what they did, killing the entire city, but even uh, dismisses Yaakov's concern. In other words, it gives the last word to Shimon Valevi. And you know, if you look in Kapitel Lamed Hay, it says in uh, Pasuk Hay, Vayisau, Vayihi Chitas Eloikim Al He Orim Asher Svivoi Seyem Veloi Rodfu Achrei Bnei Yaakov. So it seems that not only did what they did not not uh, hurt them, it didn't cause the Umois to rise up against them, but it actually instilled fear in all the surrounding cities. And you know, the, the, the Orachayim says on the Pesach, he says, that Adarabah, they're saying to Yaakov, we're more in danger, it's a Lashonakia, meaning that Yidin will not have a Tkuma, if such a thing will go without a response. That Dafke, by doing this, we will instill fear and uh, they won't uh, rise up against us. And the Torah actually gave Shimon Valevi the last word so that the whole story is not clear. Maybe really that's part of the message of Torah, Milosh and Hoyro, that uh, in such situations, there's no simple solution. There's always Tzdodim Lekan, Tzdodim Lekan, and everything has to be taken into the Cheshbin. Everything is part of the equation, and it's not clear. I mean, in this context, it's 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 uh, noteworthy that in the beginning of the Parsha, when Yaakov is planning on meeting Esau, it says, Vayiro Yaakov Mo'oid Vayetzer Loi. Yaakov was frightened and he was distressed. So Rashi says, Vayiro Shemo Yehoreg, he was afraid that he will get killed. Vayetzer Loi, Shemo Yareg Hues Acherim. This is not a fear. This is a moral distress. I mean, he's he's afraid that he's going to kill others. So the Re'ain is already marich uh, to explain why those acherim shouldn't be killed. Those acherim l'chera abichlal habo l'horgecho hashkem l'horgoy. So why is he worried about killing the acherim? But in any case, he 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 explains the whole mahalach. It's not for now. But the point I'm trying to make is that in spite of the fact that he was Vayetzeloi, he was distressed, but he knew that he has to do what he has to do. And therefore he prepared for a Muhammad. In spite of the fact that Acherim might be killed and, and it caused him distress. So you see that you have to do what you have to do. And on the other hand, you have to be distressed because if not, it will corrupt you. So. It's 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 Vayira Yaakov my Vayetzeloi, and he does what needs to be done. So it could be that that's why the the Torah is really ambivalent about this Mulchama that the Shimon Valevi have against the Anshe Shem, because that's really the the approach is you know an approach with this Stodim Lechan Lechan. But what was really the 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 halachic basis for killing Kol Zohar? In the Anshe Shem. So the Rambam in Hilchis Molochim Seif Perek Tes says, the, the, uh, he's talking about the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, and he says, the Ketzad Hain Mitzuvin Al Hadinim. How are the B'nai, the, one of the seven Mitzvahs of the B'nai Noyach, the Gemara tells us the Sanhedrin is Dinim. So the Rambam says, the Ketzad Hain Mitzuvim Al Hadinim. 
חייבים להושיב דיונים ושופטים בכל פלח ופלח, לא דון בשש מצווי סייל, ולהזהיר אס האום. ובנויח שעובר על אחס בשבע מצווי סייל, יהורג בסייף. So that's the halacha that a ben noyach that's over at any of the mitzvahs that he's mitzvah is yehorik b'saif. But the Rambam says that the mitzvah of dinim is lahoi shiv dayoni. Umipnei zeh nischaivu kol balei shchem harige shaharei shchem gozal vehem ro'u v'yodu v'loi donu. So the Rambam is saying they were all mechui of misa because bnei noyach mechui of lahoi shiv dayoni. And they should have been Dan Shem for what he did. And since they weren't Dan Shem for what he did, they became Mechoy of Misa. The Ramban in our parasha, he says, I mean, they killed Lechore innocent civilians, non combatants. So he says, but the Ramban is marich to argue with the Rambam, and he says, Bnei Noyach do not have a chiyuv to be Moshev Dayon. He says that when the Gemara tells us that one of the Sheva Mitzvahs Bnei Noyach is Dinim, it means that the Mitzvah ala Dinim, on, 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 on Dinim like Yidin ha Mitzvah, <coughs> he says uh, like like Oishik Schar Soche, Gneve, and Gzele. So that means the Mechuy Valadinim. And if somebody steals, he's Mechuy Misa. But there is no, Dinim doesn't include that they have to be Moshe Vebezden to be done. And if they don't, not Moshe Vebezden to be done, the Chai of Misa. He says, Dinim means Dinim Gneve, Voino, Voishik Schar Soche, and so on. The Nera Galeim, Im Ovar, Vigon, Avoyosha. The Ramban also asks on the Rambam if it's true that Bnei Noyach are mitzvah ladinim to be my medayonim, and that's why they were all mechui of misa. So the Ramban writes, "Hoyo Yaakov Avinu Chayev Li is koydim vezoyche b'misosan." He should have been the first to carry out this chi of misa, and he should have killed them. Why did he even rely on his children? No, as far as that's concerned, we can say that even though. Bnei Noyach Achayev Misa, if they weren't Maimed Dayonim, and you didn't have a Chiyuv to be done them Lamisa, it could be that, uh, I mean, Avada, it's not Doiche Pikuach Nefesh. And since Yaakov Avinu felt that this is endangering the security of the Jewish people, so he felt that it shouldn't be done, because Pikuach Nefesh is Doiche Kol Atere Kula, Doiche also the din of killing a Ben Noyach for being over on his mitzvahs. But Okay, that's 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 something to 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 that's a point to ponder. But there's a really another question with the Rambam. The 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 is it true that the Anches Doim were able to be Dan Shem ben Kamur, whose father was the Nesiharitz? Were they in the position of being Danim? Lachera, they were all uh, under his rule, and they weren't capable of being Danim. In any case, the Ramban takes the position that Yaakov was really against the killing of the Anshei Shem. In the beginning, he agreed to the arma, to the trick of the Mila, because he felt that probably they won't agree to be Mal. And, and then they'll give back Dina. Or that they'll come to the point of if they will be Mal, and then they'll be able to uh, release Dina from the home of Shechem ben Chamor without bloodshed. That's, that's what the Ramban says. The Ramban, the Ramban takes the position that Yaakov Avinu Bemis held that what they did was Osir. The Fize, I mean, why did Yaakov Avinu say, Achartem oisi lahavisheni b'yoyshe v'oretz v'ani m'say mispar v'nesfu olai v'nishmadeti ani u'beisi some we have to learn that he's telling them that even with she some that it was a just a justified thing to do, but nevertheless, nevertheless, they shouldn't have done it because it's a psychonic. The Rabban also talks about what was their position. 
there's a fascinating Maharal in the Gorarie that I don't really, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to understand, but I'm going to share it with you nevertheless. He says that the killing of the Anshes Doim was justified. And in principle, Yaakov agreed. And therefore, he didn't criticize them for the Maise itself. And he writes, Bezehaloshin, Venir is the Loi Kosher meeting. Why, why they were able to kill the innocent civilians. He says, Mishum Deloi Domi Shte Umois, Kigoyin Bene Yisrael Uknaniyim, Shehim Shte Umois, Kedeksiv Vahayinu Laam Echot. So that means that they were not an Am Echot, so they were two Umois. Ula Fichoch. In other words, he needs to say this because you might say that Bnei Yaakov were not an Umo, and they were not they, they weren't two independent Umois over here. So he says no. Since Shem Ben Chamor is saying since Chamor is saying Vahayinu Laam Echod, you see that at this point they're not an Am Echod and they're two Umois. No, so of the two Umois, he says Lofichah Chutar Lohem Lil Choim Al Uma Acheres Kedin Umo Habo Lil Choim Al Uma Acheres Sheitirator. So one nation going to war against another nation is something that he tira Torah. The Afal gav the Omra hat Torah ki sikrav el irli hiloch el irli hilochim oleh ve karoso e leho le shaloim. Hainu heiched the loy osu le Yisrael dover. That's only if they didn't do anything bad to us. Then we have the din of ve karoso o leho le shaloim. Avel heiched the osu le Yisrael dover. Ki goin ze she porzu bohem lasois. Lohem Nevolo, Afal Gav de Loy Oso Elo Echod Mehem, even though it was only one person that did it. Given the Michlal Ho Omhu, since he's one of the people of the nation, Kivin She Portsulam Schilim Utorim Likach Nikmasa Mehem. So we're allowed to take revenge from the entire Uma. Vahachi Nami Kola Mulchom is Shehim Nimsoim, Kigoin, Sreresam in your Eshamidionim, Afal Gav de Hoyu Harba Shiloyosu. There were many Midionim that weren't involved. Ain't a chiluk. Kivin shahoyu ba oisa uma shahosa ralohem. Mutorim love alem la mulchama. The chain hain kola mulchamas. This is the end of the lotion of the Maharal. So, according to the Maharal, I mean, in a mulchama against a people, against a nation, there's no halacha to differentiate between those that are involved, those that are not involved. Avada, it's Tzorich Talmud. It needs to be defined. It needs to be explained. I'm just telling you, this is what the Maharal says. In any case, in our Parsha, it's clearly Mashma that even that even Yaakov Avinu didn't have a principal problem with what Shimon Vilevi did. He was just worried about the consequences. But in Parsha's Vayechi, Yaakov says, Shimon Vilevi Achim, Clay Chomos Mecheiroi Sehem that their weaponry is stolen. As Rashi is mafarish, um nezushel retzichen, chomos hu beyetchen, mi birchas eisov hizu, um nezshelohi, vaatem chamastem oiso mimenu. In other words, here he's saying that what they did is really a um nezshel retzichen, it's murder. And where'd you get that from? You got that from Esau, that's hayodayim yidei Esau. It's inappropriate for 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 a yid to, to 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 act this way, right? And he goes on and he says, "Oror apom ki oz, the evrosom ki koshoso, a cursed is their rage, yeah, ki ki oz, it's intense, and 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 their wrath is 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 is, is should be a curse because it's uh, it's harsh, ki koshoso. So what changed?" In in our parish, it seems that he doesn't have a problem with the the Iker Maisa. His problem is about the, the, he's worried about the consequences. And 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 over here, he's talking clearly against what they did. He's saying that they're murderers and they 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 took that omnis from Esau. So I think that Bemis it's Mavur and the Pasik Minei Obey, because the Pasik says like this. So Rashi says, Ba'apam Horgu Ish is talking about Shem. It's talking about Shem. Rashi says, Ki Ba'apam Horgu Ish, Elu Chamor Va'anshe Shem. 
Ve'enam chashuvim kulam eloke ish echot. That's why we call it ish. But the upper mark of ish is talking about the killing of Shechem. And what's b'tzoyinam ikru shor? Says Rashi, rotsu la'akor es yosef. Shenikro shor. Shenem ha'bukhor shor rehodolam. So, the pshat is like this. This act of killing the Anshe Sdoim, even if it's a justified act, but it has to be done with pure midas. It has to be done solely l'shem shomayim. As the Pasuk says, Roymemois kel begroinam, the cherev pifiois biyodam. The cherev pifiois biyodam has to come together with Roymemois kel begroinam. And only in that context can it be Lasis Nikoma Bagoyim Tsechis Balomi. Otherwise, you're corrupting yourself. Otherwise, you can't do it. So when Yaakov saw that not only against Shem did they wage a war, but also against Yosef, Ba'apam Hargulish, Ubirzoinam Ikru Shor. Ah, so now. The Mulchama that they had against Shem became possible in his eyes. In other words, until now, he had no principal issue with the Mulchama against, against Shem. But now that he sees that this rage is really not uh, confined to a, a, a context like, 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 like Shem, but they're actually acting out against their own brother, Ba'apam Horgu Ish, Ubertsoinam Ikru Shor. Therefore, he says, Arur apom ki oz ve'evrosom ki koshosa. But you know that it's interesting that the curse that Yaakov Avinu is cursing them is in a very interesting nusach. He says, Arur apom ki oz ve'evrosom ki koshosa. Achal came be Yaakov ve'afitzeim be Yisro. I'll scatter them amongst Yaakov and Yisro. So he's not saying that they should uh, that they should lose their apple. He's not saying that they should die. He's saying that they should be scattered. How is that? How is that a klola? And how does that deal with the problem? So you know the Nitziv says, mm-hmm. Sometimes we need ma'at anoshim kaila, a few such people. Avol rubam b'mokayim echad koshim. But to have many people with this, with these character traits in one place, that's 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 difficult. That's not that's not healthy. Al Kain, Achal Kain be Yaakov, sheyu maat maat b'mokim echad. So that's why I sh- they should be dispersed. Ba'afitzim be Yisrael, they should be scattered be Yisrael, which is the higher level of Yidden. Kain be Kerev Chasidei Yisrael, Nitzrach l'faomim ish koze. And based on what we said, Mr. we have to say that this uh, tendency towards Kanos uh, could evolve into an Apam Ki Oz when many people with this tendency are together. But when they are scattered, so that tendency will not go beyond where it's kosher and where it's necessary. So in other words, it'll preserve the kanois in its proper form and it will actually uh, be useful. It'll be useful. That's what he's saying. But it's not only uh, the Nitziv that says this, but I want to read to you what uh, Rav Shamshin Hirsch says. You know, people call him Rav Shamshin Rav but really he was Rav Shamshin Birib So, So Rav Hirsch says like this, uh, in Parshas Vayechi, he says, Achal kem b'yakoi v'afitzim b'yisrael, kavonis ha-machalik, eineno l'hachlish. Yeah, if I would have the English translation, it would be uh, easier to do this. He says, "Kavanas amachalik einen ol hachlish dover shohoy sholim atkoi, elo lechalik dover yokor, leman yizku by rabin." It's really to, 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 that everybody should be able to benefit from this trait. 
he says, um, Kenegde ha mefits mechalik dava sholem, a mfarat isa mechalokim ketanim, kechola efshik de levatles likudo yushlem usay. So now he says there's two two in Yonim over here. Achalkin beYakov, Achalkin beYakov is positive, but Afitzim beYisrael is 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 to be machlish, is to is to is to neutralize the that that koyach legamri. Now he says like this: Yaakov is klal Yisrael in goats when they're suffering hashpola uredifos when they're downtrodden. Yisrael. Is Am Yisrael ben Itzchoynoi when Klal Yisrael is victorious? Shezocha boy miyad akel when Klal Yisrael is in its place. So he says like this: Hilkoch hasakona hanishkefes la Klal may evra zamom shul Shimon Velevi. The danger for the Klal from from Shimon Velevi's evra and zam kayemes rak bezman apriches shel ha'am. That's that's a, a problem when the nation is at its height. Bishosha who mahavet sibur chosok. Ha'olu benoke lihi mosheik akre hashpa shnei shvotim ilukodim. Hamalay makoras koichum. The regish akal boyer bekirbam. The fichok be Yisrael. When Yidin are on the on the on the, on the top, a fit same. Be Medina ha Yehudas ha Poyrachas yu mefuzorim. And that's why Levi didn't get a chelik boritz and the the mesayv of Alboti Gronis. But then he says, "Avo begolus kasher hagoyrol medake yasakol." When Yidden are suppressed and 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 v'ha'uma atzma mufuzeres, oz kroiva hasakone shekol hakoro atzmis teoved. Then there's a danger. That Eden will lose their sense of value, their sense of self. They'll feel that they won't have any self-respect and they won't have a sense of importance. And therefore he says, therefore he says that the halachats yomis kol koyach ruchoni, the stress will will kill every spiritual koyach that we have. L'fichoch achal kem Laman, and this is positive. Laman Yuchal Gama Yehudi Hanoide Kiroichel, even the, the Jew, the peddler, will be able to look begavo al hapircho ha'iropi. Which I mean it's like a pirchoch is like a, a punk, a bully, on the European pirchoch. He'll be able to look at him begaiva, he'll have a sense of self. Vi'iluhu. Shehushpal ad offer v'zura ben agoyim v'zura ben agoyim yishmer al hakarosa yatzmis he won't lose his sense of self importance v'al regesh haklal hafotzas shimon v'levi b'medina hayehudis hevia b'kviseres chalukasim begolus okay but then he says shimon v'levi hichyu bonu es hakoyach v'saoyz es hagesh v'hagava hayehudis oatzilo b'shomrom al haruach hayehudis sheericho yomim achrei hamedina. And that's the idea of Mishim and Soifrim, who Mishanim be Bate Knesias, who Mishavit Levi Bate Medrasha Shayoiskin Betara. And for that, we need the Ois and the 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 Apom of Shimon the Levi. So, in any case, what he's saying is it's Alderik the Nitziv, but he's saying that it depends on where Yidin are. But you see that it's all uh, it's not black and white. Uh, there's a lot of gray, and 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 and, and war is gray, and Shim and Valavia are gray, and sometimes we benefit from those hergeshim of kanos, and sometimes we suffer from them. I mean, the right measure is 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 what's needed, and moderation is what's called for, and we need to know when and where to apply what. And that's the Achalkein B'Yakov, the Afitzein B'Yisro. Anyway, so I wish you all a good Shabbos. And we should be zoiche to do the right thing in the right place. And uh, and uh, understand complexities. And uh, a good Shabbos.